This morning we're going to be working on skinning a mallard duck for flying pose. One of the first things I do with all the birds is make sure all the bones and all the everything's loose so as I'm skinning it I don't have to be pulling on it. Everything's ready at that point. One of the main tools you need this morning is a scalpel with a new blade in it. I've always got my borax handy to keep my hands dry. Now I, there's two options for the bill and the head. I prefer to remove the bill and the skull and open the head wide open. The second option, which you may see in a different tape, would be to make a cut on the bottom side of the throat. Probably just no bigger than you need to get it out, probably two and a half, three inches long. Real nice cut and peel it out. But I like the option of taking the bill completely off and the head out. So I'm going to make a real careful cut right at the juncture of the bill and the feathers. We're going to make that cut all the way around. The bill at this time. We're going to carefully Start to peel that skin back using a fingernail. Now my fingernails take a beating in this trade because I'm constantly using my fingers. fingers dry with that borax very carefully with the scalpel blade we're going to remove completely remove this bill I'm sure in some of the other tapes, and we've got a lot of different skinning videos, a lot of different bird videos. We're going to try to teach you as many different options as possible through these training sessions. Everybody's got a little different technique for doing something. And we designed this website. So that you could learn as many different techniques and pick the ones that work best for you. I'm a believer that you can never learn too much and what works for one does not always work for the other. Now I'm always keeping my fingers dry with that borax because it helps to hold on to stuff so you don't make a mistake. Cut deep enough through the eye. And now at that point, we're going to sever the head. The spine away from the head. There's the removed skull. We're going to lay that aside for now and we will take care of that at a later point.
Now we're going to proceed to skin the rest of the duck. We're going to start right at the breastbone, very carefully taking the scalpel and slicing from there down to about half to three fourths inch short of the anus. Carefully open this duck up. Now that the cut's done, we're going to start our skinning process, working around one side down towards the leg. I like to work down on the legs. Find the leg bones, the right there is the top of the leg bone. I will find the juncture of the leg and the thigh. And this is all stuff you will learn with your find as much on anatomy. We'll put it, we'll put anatomy pictures on this website, but you sever that bone very carefully with a just an eight inch side cutter that I have. We'll sever the meat. And there we got the first leg free. Now we're gonna turn the duck around. We're gonna very, very carefully skin down to the second leg. Skin all the way up to where you started your breast cut. That'll help you open it up farther. Second leg. I'm going to bring it out again. I'm going to take my side cutters. I'm going to cut that through that bone very carefully again. Very carefully cover the meat. As you notice, I continually dry my hands throughout the whole process. That's the second leg bone free. Now we're going to very carefully skin back through the anus and remove the tail. I like to stand the duck on its chest when doing this. There is the juncture of the tailbone to the body. Most of the time they just break right away. Just press it away. Start pushing that skin down the body. I like to, I like to force it down very carefully. You can cut it with the scalpel if you need to. I find less holes and a faster, easier job by just using my fingers and my thumb and pushing it down. At this point, I'm down to where the wing bone meets the body here. I'm going to cut very deep through that point into the breast. Very carefully skinning down over the chest. The chest I have to use the scalpel, it won't push away, it'll just tear. So the chest part, you won't get lucky enough to just push off on a mallard or a wood duck. We'll skin a wood duck in a later video.
At this point we have the one wing bone severed from the body. We will turn this duck around. We will repeat that process on the other side. And this all takes a lot of practice and a lot of knowledge of the anatomy of the birds. get efficient at it and you will learn with taxidermy efficiency is your number one money maker but learn it don't get in a hurry as you're learning at this point we're going to pull the neck through since the head's already off that neck should pretty much turn it inside out for you there we've got the body we're going to lay that aside to make the cast body or to fit a body to the bird at a later time. Work your head out so that your bird's completely inside out. Now, I can't keep my hands dry enough above here so I've got a drawer that I've made. Just for this step, borax in it. And borax can be bought from Van Dyke Supply. Any of the supply houses should have borax for you. Keep a, I keep a container to put all the meat pieces in that I get off of these birds. First step we're going to do here. I'm going to start removing the meat from the legs and the wings in the tail area. I very carefully work the skin down to the knee juncture on the duck, the joint between the feathers and the leg. Try to get all tendons worked at the same time. I like to go over that joint, so I put some pressure. I hold the foot bone, leg bone down to the leg, and I very carefully pull them tendons so they open up that joint. When that's opened up, I just snip them tendons off, and I proceed to clean the rest of the meat off the leg. fingernails and borax to clean the bone up nice and clean getting as much meat and blood off as I can at that point I turn the duck and repeat the process on the other side after 27 years I figure I make this look a little easier than it's going to be when you start practicing just be assured you can learn it, but it all takes practice. I got those tendons all off the skin. I'm going to bend that leg again, work it over that joint. to get rid of the rest of the leftover tendons and meat on the leg. At this point we're going to move up to the wings. There I'm just removing some excess meat that was left on when I skinned it. I like to skin deep, get it off the skin and get the body out of the way and then I start cleaning up the skin. Now the wing bones. There's different ways to do the wing. I'll show you the way. I'm going to leave the... We're going to get this first bone. There's three junctures in the wing. 
three sets of bones. There's a bone here. There's a bone from here to here, from here to here. This one out here on a duck does not have enough meat. We do not open that one up. We're going to remove all the meat inside here and here, but we're going to do it <coughs> inside by turning the leg in, the wing inside out. Here again, I've got it loose. I use my fingers as much as possible. <coughs> first joint we're looking for. Make sure I'm well down past that joint. I take that skin lightly over the edge of the joint, but I'm still leaving it connected right here. Now I'm going to proceed with my little three inch utility knife to remove all the and tenons from that wing right up to this ball joint. At this point the ball is still on there. We're going to find the bone right up next to the ball joint. We're going to take our side cutters. We're going to make a snip on it. We're going to break it off. If you shatter the bone, we will be teaching you how to repair bones in later videos when we're mounting birds. Be careful now, you could leave sharp edges on the edge of that bone that can cut you real fast. At all times we're trying to remove pieces of meat very carefully from the hide. Don't just grab it and pull. Make sure you got a good hold of the skin so you don't tear the whole bird in half. Now, now we got the first joint clean. We're going to remove the meat in the second joint. I like to leave the feathers connected to the backbone here. I will show you in a later video how to strip them off if you want. In fact, I'll show you how to strip one off today and I'll clean one the way I like to do it. The first one we're going to clean using the method I like to leave them attached because it makes the mounting process easier if you when you're finishing the bird. You got a better better looking bird. This is a trick I learned later on in taxidermy. The other side I'll show you the way I was taught and the way I did it for probably the first eight to ten years of my business. But right now I've still got that. I'm working this down. I'm going to try to do it and you're going to find you're going to tear tear these open occasionally doing it this way. They can be sewed back up, glued back on. That will happen at a later time. But just right now just be careful work it down to the edge. I just broke the bone or the meat over the edge of the second joint here. At this point I'm going to start removing the I, I did that by holding the tendons and pulling it over. At this point I'm going to use the back side of my utility knife. I'm going to start scraping that bone in between. There's two bones here. This bone is still attached to the feathering. And this bone is completely loose. Using the utility knife and my fingers, I'm going to get rid of all the meat that I can possibly get rid of so you don't have any problems with rotting meat or bugs later on in the mount's life. Second side, 
This one will do a little different for those of you that want to do a different style or have problems with the first style. And everybody does have problem learning that first style. But I would suggest learning it because if you do a lot of birds, it's a makes for a lot better mount in the end. A lot easier finishing when you're mounting it. This side we're going to work down to that first bone again. But instead of quitting like we did before, once we get over that first joint with our fingernail, we're going to take the back side of our utility knife, we're going to push tight over that bone, we're going to hold the first bone in our hand tight, we're just going to take and we're going to push that feathering and disembark the feathering from the bone. There, now you got all your wing right here with all the meat on it. At this point, we're going to remove the meat just like we did the other side. Now this skinning process works with almost all birds, whether it be upland game, Upland game will skin easier than ducks. Ducks are one of the hardest ones, I feel, because they're so tender. At this point, yet it's still okay. It's when we start fleshing this bird that we got problems with the skin tearing and putting holes. Thread and needle will become your best friend in taxidermy. Learn how to sew, learn how to become efficient at it. Uh, that's your second set of bones. Now there's a difference in your two wings. One, you'll see the feathering still attached to the back side of the ulna. The second one, we've taken the feathering away from it. Two different styles of wings, they'll both work. I prefer leaving the feathers attached. Right now I'm very carefully removing as much of the meat and fat as I can from the bird using my fingers. Being very careful not to tear this bird. Now we're going to remove the tailbone. Just separate the tailbone down as much as possible. Right there it is. We can remove that. I always have a handy little Fisker scissors on hand. You got these oil glands above there. We need to get rid of those. Some of the meat around the tail. This is the most tender part of the bird right here. Right in the anus. I'm going to trim some of this away right now. I'm trying to get as much of the fatty, meaty looking parts of the bird off as possible. So you don't have any stink to your bird when you go to mount it. This is all technique. This is all, I can show you how to skin this way. You're just very carefully cutting 
that meat off of that skin using that knife. Now we're going to work on this tailbone, or the tail feathers. We're going to clean the quills out in the tail feathers by cutting down. I like to use the blade side of my knife just to put some pressure on them. I'm not cutting the quills. I'm leaving the quills. I'm just taking the meat off of them. This time use my fingernails. I got a good hold of the tail, pinched between my thumb and my forefinger. With the left hand, the right hand I'm using my thumbnail to clean as much of that meat off. I use the knife, whatever it takes. Now that I've got the tails opened up, I'm going to trim as much of that Oil gland off again, more than I had before. Putting some pressure and you'll see the oil just work its way out. Now we're going to go back up to the head. We're going to very carefully remove the meat and fat layer from the skin on the head. trim the inner eyelids off. All I want, I want to go right up next to the eyelid. But I don't want that inner eyelid left on a bird. Okay, you can see very carefully how well I cleaned around the eyelid here. Work that meat off. 
I've got the eardrums opened up right here. Now that's a BB hole we'll take care of later. This flesh here, we can get some off of our fingers. We'll get the rest off with the grinder. I use a light wheel in the grinder. That'll be the next step to teach you. The wings again, as I've showed you, there's the wing we stripped completely off. I'm constantly pulling as much meat and stuff off as I find. There's what the joint will look like. The way I like to leave it. The feathering still attached back here. For the most part, this bird's ready to go to the grinder, remove all this excess meat and fat. There's what the tail bone looks like. Feather, feather quills. We're going to take this to the grinder at this point. Okay, when I do this step, I use a fine wire wheel. As you can see, I've textured this wheel. All the wires are bending this way, so I want to make sure the rotation goes so it's, the bend is going with the duck. Go this way. The wheels are bent this way, going this way. We'll put that on the bird, on the grinder. Now they make, you'll find that there's special grinders made for doing ducks. I have just a half or six inch bench grinder. Make sure you have a apron or a, something to protect your clothes on because this is messy. A lot of times I'll even wear a hat if it's a real bad greasy bird. This is one of the processes you have to be very careful when doing it. We're going to run this bird. Everything's going to work from the tail towards the head. Always running with the feather line and you'll learn what the feather line works is as you're doing birds. I like to start from the wings forward through my first part. Very carefully touching that wheel. Be comfortable in your chair. Very important to have comfort and be able to see what you're doing. Sounds like I'm putting a lot of pressure, but I'm putting very little pressure. I'm keeping the skin tight, don't let it loose. I'm keeping the skin pulled tight through this whole process. You let the skin get loose, the grinder's gonna catch it. I remember very clearly the first duck I sent through the grinder. I had a tail, a leg, and a body. About three hours of sewing. It will happen. I can do is show you how to do this. It takes a lot of practice to get comfortable with it. You see, I just pulled the feather through.
back area and the back area are your strongest parts, your chest area and your tail area are the parts where you're going to make the most mistakes and you're going to have the most hairs. So, get the feel for the bird up here in the neck and the back areas. Then proceed to the chest and then to the tail. He was shot in the head about three or four BBs in the head of this bird. That's when all them feathers are coming off through. The head now. Just remember, you always go from the tail to the head. That's the way your feather quills lay. That'll keep the grinder from catching the quills and pulling them through as much as possible. out of the 
out of the grinder if at all possible. As you can see, I'm holding, holding this bird so that the feathers don't get in there any more than they have to because that grinder will catch them feathers and pull it right through. Slow going down around this lake and this tail area. Very light touch. But in 28 years, I have not found a, any better way to get this off. But, I'm hoping through all these videos and the fact that I'm going to have try to have a lot of different people represented on this website, I'm going to learn some new tricks before it's done too. And now you can see how close the feather quills are, how we've cleaned all the meat out. We've got little bits left when I wash the bird later and take care of it. The head, that blood spots will wash out when we go to wash them. You can't take that out the grinder, that's right in the skin. Later we're going to work a little more of this meat pieces off, but for the most part, as you can see, the quills are all nice and open. It's a fairly clean bird. This is what it like, looks like when I like to start mounting it. Now at this point, you can take it to the washing and finish the bird. Today we could mount it. This bird I'm gonna put back in the freezer, tag it with the guy's name and mount it at a later date. That's the end of this part of the video. Now we're gonna proceed to clean the head and the bill out that we removed from this mallard earlier. A lot of scissors work in this. Don't talk too much while you're popping the eyeballs out. They have a tendency of breaking. You're just gonna remove every bit of meat. Now the second option of this is they have all kinds of artificial heads on the market for these birds. I've used them. I still prefer to use the real head, the real bill. For the most part but if they're shot up broke up too bad you can replace them find a good good one on the market Tuscas has a lot of good ones made by Corey Crothers any of the supply catalogs got them you just basically you're working up in there trying to cut I try to take the brains out through the inside of the skull I try to leave all the as much of the bone intact as I can. This one was shot in the head, as I said earlier. About three BBs went through his skull, so he's not in real good of shape, but I'm still gonna try to salvage his skull. For two reasons. The main one is it's the original skull. The second one is artificial heads will run you 10 to 15 dollars depending on which one you use. Oh, I lost the whole back of the skull on this one, so the whole side of the skull. I 
I can still salvage it. I've done them enough. When I put my clay in later, I'll work everything back into place. This ain't gonna be a very good skull to show you when it's done because of all the broken up parts. Nope, I ended up completely taking the bottom jaw away. It's not what I like to do, but it happens from time to time. Shots of bad in the head, I'm gonna lose the whole back of that skull before I'm done. For some of your earlier birds, I'd suggest getting a fake bill for that one, but I'm still gonna use it. I use a good clay, a good quality clay that we sell. We made it, we developed the clay been using it for over 20 years. It's available on this website for sale. It's a good, good hardening clay. I will be able to set everything back in the clay and it'll hold just fine. But at this point, that skull's ready to be washed in a moment. With the rest of the bird, 